This is one of the most beautiful passages in the, in the gospel writings. Um, just the first line that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So we see in that passage that, that love even preceded the giving. It was love that was motivating um, the Lord. It was love that, that made the Lord so generous that he gave. And not only did he give all these gifts of creation and the gift of his son, but you could say that through giving his son, he gave his very person. And I think analogously, you think about when a man and woman fall in love with each other and they get married, and you could say they kind of give their very own persons to each other. They take the risk of giving everything uh, to the other. And so it's this, this, this love that's a total abandonment love. And so it's very important for us to realize that as we approach the Lord, that we don't approach him with a false image of him as the God who is always calculating our deeds and always calculating our misdeeds, that he's a God who loves us and he's loving us into existence. He's sustaining our love. And all we have to do is receive it, is to receive his love. And he does this primarily for all of us giving us his son through sacraments, through the sacraments and the sacrament of the most holy Eucharist, the most powerful, wonderful event that will happen here is the Eucharist, the transformation of bread and wine into his very body, blood, soul, and divinity. And, or when I anoint somebody who's sick, the power of Christ touches them. He enters into their soul. He brings them into life. And all they have to do is receive it. And that's the way the, the Father is continuously loving the world. It's through the Eucharist. He's loving the world completely through the Eucharist. And so I think sometimes we, we downplay the, the sacraments because, because they're not very stimulating. And it seems like in our culture, we need to have stimulation. It's, I don't know why exactly, but it seems like we need stimulation. And the Lord, he, when he comes through the sacraments, he makes himself present supernaturally. So it means that he transcends our senses. He comes supernaturally. He's, he's supernatural. It's beyond. It's above our natural capacity to taste and to sense. But he's truly present there. And it's through the gift of faith that we encounter him and he encounters us. And there's something dramatic about the Lord, I think, in the way he, he comes in such an ordinary way. Um, why does he do that in his mysterious way? Because he does that because he wants us to love him. And he wants us to reflect his love to the world. Sometimes, you know, as I see as a priest... Um, many people doing things like, um, you know, people have these uh, amazing encounters with Christ, which I think are very beautiful. I think that Christ does come through our senses and through our emotions. But at the same time, that we can't remain there. We can't just be sense-dependent on God. because, Or even um, some people get uh, very caught up in having miraculous things. They want to see miraculous things of God. They want to see healings of God. And, and God can work through that. He does work through that. But what's most important, like even if somebody had this huge emotional encounter, what, what Christ is asking ultimately is, the fruit of that will be your love. St. Paul says that. That he says, what are prophecies? What are healings? What is faith that can even move mountains without love? It's nothing. It's nothing. And if we don't have love, even if we had the most miraculous thing happen to us, it means nothing. That it's love, it's our life of charity that's really the sign of our union with Christ, our experience of Christ. And he comes to us, and love is sort of silent in a sense. It's not loud. It's silent. It's a silent gaze. It's a silent movement. And he comes to us through these sacraments in a very mystical, silent way. And all he wants us to do 
is receive him in faith and silence. And sometimes we're so scared of silence because, well, we're always stimulated by things. And we're so scared. You're not going to be with me, Lord. You're not really there with us. But he is. He is. He's with us in the midst of silence. He formed us in silence. And he will call us from this life to the next in silence. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Let's receive this gift in the silence of our hearts through faith.